Well, hello there. Stag here. Welcome back to my channel where I showcase the creation process of my creepy cute lowbrow and gothic fantasy art and ramble the art things. A lot of people ask me how I achieve the thin layers and do the glazing in the acrylic paint. So, I figured I would do a bit of an introduction to this. I feel it's important to do what works for you. You need to experience and practice with the media and what works for me might not work for you. First, let's start with water. The controversial water. I still on occasion thin my paints with water and you will hear stories of how it's horrible. The grounds will open up and spout flames of hellfire, meteors will crash down, destroy your home, your firstborn will be birthed with no hands, and lastly, your painting will just fall right off the canvas. People sometimes are just trying to sell you products. The story is, when adding water you degrade the paint. The binder particles are separated and diluted and can no longer lock together and do their binding things. So it can cause the paint to flake off or lift or all sorts of things. If you're talking about longevity, yes, paint might do that anyway 200 years down the line, depending on how the painting was cared for or even the climate in which it was stored. That can also have an effect. But glazing layers are not normally the top layer exposed to the elements. Paintings are normally varnished with a protective layer anyway by the artist. Right now, in this day and age, we are using materials crafted a lot better than they were back in the day. It might make some mad, but I don't see it as a sin that it's made out to be sometimes to use water to thin the paints. So yes. I still use water on occasion to thin my paints. I have never had an issue and I've done it for many years. Well, I've had one issue, but I also get that with method number two. My second method, which I started using about two years ago, is airbrush medium. You sometimes see in the videos, I just take this bottle and squirt it all over the painting and just start smearing paint around on top of it. If you have hang-ups on using water, this is definitely an option. It thins the paint and does not affect the drying time, and it creates more of an elastic-y film similar to paint. So my issues I have with glazing. If you're using water, you need to wait for it to dry completely before the next layer. It might have areas where the color lifts. You don't really have a lot of work time. With it because the water is already evaporating anyway. Um, if you're using airbrush media, there is a short window it might still be workable right after you lay it. You, you can sometimes maybe slap another color in there to create more of a gradient. If it starts to get tacky, you have already been working it too long and you probably have color lift and it can screw with the transition of an area. And then trying to fix it can just adds more issues and you just need to wait for layers to dry with either process. I know a lot of people think acrylics dry too fast and there are products that can fix that. Uh, but for me, they dry way too slow and I keep a heat gun ready when working with many thin layers. One of the best uses for the glazing technique is over and under painting. When you focus more on the variations of values between the light and the dark, then then add the color later on, you can achieve a great amount of depth. But you can glaze anything from an already painted cheek to whites in the eyes. It doesn't really have to be an underpainting. I'm just using those as examples here. While glazing, I work back and forth, even though it can look like a painting that is almost done, just in sepia tone or grayscale, doesn't mean my glazing layers are like the last layers. I still have to work highlights and shadows over them, glaze some more, maybe some more highlights, glaze some more and add some more. It just kind of 
keeps going. It is hard with painting. It requires a bit of patience as it might look like crap through a good chunk of the painting until it just doesn't anymore. Seeing it through to the end, even if you hate the painting, is a good idea because it is still practice. Now, some tips. I do highly suggest a tonal layer when starting a painting. Instead of watering down the paints, I always use the airbrush medium with the paint first. Having the first acrylic layer helps kind of set the ground and makes it a little easier for the first few layers as the paint will grab on better. For me, this isn't like an aesthetic thing, it is just kind of easier to paint on because it creates more like a fill zone for that like first acrylic layer, which normally I would be working towards with painting as opposed to like watered down paint. I do also add white to a color for a lot of different glazes. What white you're using does matter. A titanium white will create more of like a cloudy chalky tone to the color and like a zinc white will be more translucent so keep that in mind if you're say glazing with a pink or something like that. I prefer titanium but that's my personal preference. I create a lot of misty atmospheres so it ends up working in my favor but a lot of people sometimes prefer that zinc. And if I'm doing a large portion glazing in like say the background, I often use a large dry brush to smooth the layer out. So you can see that throughout these videos. I use smaller makeup brushes for more feathered blending of maybe smaller areas. I do this immediately after laying the layer because if I wait too long it will start lifting the color. It helps with blending and if there is any excess pooling of say too much liquid. For reference purposes I used my paintings Cosmic Prism and The Lair. You can find both these paintings time lapse start to finish on my channel but I had them slowed down quite a bit for this because I thought they were a pretty good representation of what I was talking about. I will try to do more things like this where I talk more in depth about the process and do more tutorials. Um, I want to do another one where I'm actually doing a project specifically for this. This is kind of like more like an introduction to it and where I show some examples and just rattle on about it. Um, but I do have an actual project in mind I want to do to actually showcase this from start to finish. But thank you guys for watching. If you want to stay up to date with my art, make sure to find me on Instagram. You can also find a menagerie of prints, paintings, pins, patches, stickers. All that fun stuff featuring my art at lowbrownmisfits.com. Well, bye.